Hello Steelers and welcome to another Bench Report Hobby Update. Uh, later on I'm going to be talking about the uh, CrackCon 4 which I was at last week which I didn't get a chance to talk about in the last Hobby Update but I'll be talking about a little bit more about that uh, later on in the video so stay tuned. Uh, but first of all some of the stuff that I painted this week uh, it's not been a huge amount but I have managed to get some things painted. I painted the Voltagers of the Young Guard this is for the 1815 Punch-Up and Plan Soir uh, scenario from the 100 days forces uh, lists from the two fat lardies special from a few years ago finally got around to painting them so these are the last of the french that i've done for a little while of the uh, the 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 guard the uh, the young guard I've also painted up uh, some of the officers as well, the guard officers. These are mounted on pennies, so they're on slightly bigger bases than the rest of the units. And also on top of that, I also painted some celebrating uh, infantry as well. So these are uh, just some line infantry that I'm going to mix in with the rest of my line uh, where and when I want to. All for sharp practice. Well, these are all 18 mil figures from AB Miniatures. I got them from Eureka here in the UK, and they are by far the best uh, in the. I think in in that scale, definitely. I've got some more Prussians on their way as well, just to fill in the blanks for the Prussians that I don't have for that particular scenario. So once they're painted, I will play the scenario out as well. I'm looking forward to it, uh, but I just wanted to get them in in a couple of uh, sections myself rather than uh, buying them all at once. The other things I painted as well this week were, uh, these were given to me by Mike, Mike Wilkins, he is also known as Cake Weaver over on Twitter, he gave me, uh, at the weekend, last weekend, he gave me a load of 3D printed stuff, I've got some of it here on the bench, but I've also got some of it still in the blast blister here that he gave me, uh, and one of these things was a 3D printed fountain, which I basically just added to a little base, and that will go as a nice centrepiece to pretty much any town or village. Uh, he also did me a Kubelwagen as well, which I painted done it in the early German grey colours and also some sandbags as well which I again quickly painted up useful for many periods well 20th century mostly and as I say just a few more bits and pieces in here I'm going to be painting those up over over the next uh, over the next week or so in the post I have got nothing uh, like I say the only thing I got was uh, at the weekend uh, Mike gave me uh, a blister pack full of stuff and then Kev also gave me these uh, little uh, gun positions as well or observation posts which I'll probably use them for I've not painted them up yet but I will get round to that he gave me those over at CrackCon so thanks for that Kev and thanks to you again Mike for the uh, the 3D printed stuff but what I have been doing this week actually is looking at this again this is Rommel this is by Sam Mustafa uh, so this is his 19, uh, 2017 game that he brought out, which is uh, supposedly, uh, you know, high-level logistics uh, game uh, for the Second World War. Uh, so it's uh, in a similar way as Blucher is. So that's why I bought it when it was released. We played it quite a bit when it was released. I've got quite a lot of three mil stuff for Rommel, which I just haven't really seen the table for the last getting on for five years I would say at this point when I started this channel some of the very early videos that I did were about Rommel, about how to play and things, got a couple of things wrong as you always do but uh, I, I, did, I did do a little bit about Rommel I want to come back to it because I think it's such a good game and I'd forgotten how much of a good game it is uh, it's a little difficult to play solo simply because there are a couple of things in it where you are choosing tactics you choose tactics as the attacker and the defender and you keep it secret until you go uh, until the 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 uh, the, the fight con uh, starts basically and some of those tactics can negate the the enemy so it's quite difficult as a solo player to you know to not know what is going to come so what i've done is i've i've kind of come up with a bit of a basic idea uh, this probably won't make much sense to you unless you've actually played the game, but it's a bit of a, a, an AI thing. So, in the solo game, uh, you are the active player when you are active, so you are the one that is attacking, because it's an I go, you go. So if you're attacking, you're the active player. The uh, the Basically, the, the game itself, the AI, is a defending player, so it's defensive in that particular attack. So whoever is attacking is always going to... So what you do is you choose your tactics as the attacker. Uh, you choose... I think it's up to three depending on how many uh, units you have in that attack. So you can use those. And also depending on how many ops you have, which are your basically action points uh, or command points. And you can then choose those. So what you do is you do that first. But then for each of the units that are in the defence... 
so the passive player in this in this effect they will then roll a d6 on a four up they will then choose at random a tactic uh, a defensive tactic to use and then spend the appropriate ops and command points so uh so so you could potentially have up to three tactics being used uh, defensive tactics being used in that particular fight depending on how many units are defending or you could have none depending on how how bad your dice rolls go also it's going to be tempered by how many command points that you uh, the, the defending unit actually has left as well so if say for example they only have one command point left an op left then uh they can't choose three tactics so you know it kind of negates it straight away uh, you can only choose one because it costs you one for each tactic some of them cost more obviously so it depends the the way you do this normally is you have a sheet with all your tactics on them written on them but what i did years ago is i actually turned it into a card game i have a feeling that sam was actually originally going to turn it into a card game but it was the cost was just too prohibitive so uh, for producing all the different cards for all the different uh, sides so i've actually made my own for the, uh, the the germans and the soviets for the eastern front uh, some of them are generic some of them are early late and mid so basically all I have to do is then draw out those cards, those specific ones. I'll separate them out of the, you know, the pile and put the defensive ones to one side and draw those out at random. And then it's basically, it's like a player opposite uh, actually choosing uh, their cards. So you don't know what you're going to get. And I thought that just adds a little bit of fog of war, a bit of friction to it. Uh, because, as you know, some of the, 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 the defensive tactics negate the uh the the offensive offensive tactics so i think you know it's, it's just a way of doing that and just trying to make it a little easier for uh, to play so i'm going to try it out and i'm going to make a a review of the game anyway because i really do like rommel it's a great game and i'm also i am going to uh, try to play a solo game of it as well at some point in the next few weeks see how those uh, that works and if it does because there's, I don't think there's a huge amount of uh, rommel battle reports out there anyway on the internet all right the next thing that I did as well this week was um, played decks again at Quartermaster General Eastern Front, East Front, should I say. Uh, this was lent to me actually by Paul over the week, and what I've done is I've made a review of that, which should be out, I think, next week, um, if my scheduling is correct. Uh, very So thank you massively, Paul, for um, for lending it to me. I know his, his son was desperate to play it, so uh, I do apologise, Sam, if you're watching, which you're probably not, but I do apologise. Uh, and uh, so I gave that back to Paul this week. Week, but before I gave it back, Dex and I had a game of it. This time we swapped sides. I took the Soviet defenders, he took the German attackers, and he absolutely wiped the floor with me, completely handed my ass to me. Uh, I uh, was pushed all the way back to the back line of the Soviet uh, squares, basically. I'd, the problem was, apart from my very poor tactical nouns, was that all the cards that I seemed to be getting were all really good for uh, earlier on, they were really good for later on, and later on they were really good for earlier on. So it just it just did not match up with what was happening on the table. Uh, but yeah, he came out, I think he came out a full 10 points ahead of me in the final scoring round. Great game though, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was just good fun, as, it, as they always are, those Quartermaster General games. The other thing that happened, obviously, was CrackCon 4, a broadside of crack. That was last weekend. I didn't report on it last weekend because I was recording my uh, bench report before I got back, so I just didn't get a chance to. Uh, however, uh, I can now report on it fully. It was a great day, absolutely really well attended. It was down at Bash, which is Boards and Swords Hobbies in Derby. Uh, there was major flooding uh, overnight. Uh, and I got to within about 200 yards of the shop and basically had to turn around and go about another 15, 20 minutes out of my way to get back to the shop. It was literally around the corner from it because the underpass was flooded. Uh, so uh, there was that. That was a bit of a trauma at the beginning because I was, I could see the time was ticking down for me to get set up and everything. I was just like, you know, getting a bit worried. But I got there, got set up, said hello to everybody and things. And, and uh, I set up two games of Chain of Command one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, both were very well attended and everyone seemed to enjoy themselves. Uh, in the morning we had John and Kev playing as the British uh, against Nathan, Simon and Mark as well. So there's three on the other side. Uh, I was ably helped by Steph as well, who is, who's played plenty of chain of command. So he was, um, he was good to have on the other side of the table uh, just to explain what was happening when I didn't, I was uh, 
otherwise distracted or you know we, we could talk about various rules decisions and things then in the afternoon uh, Simon came back for it but we also had uh, Dan and Dan and also Mike as well who was the one who gave me the uh, material uh, the, the 3d printed stuff and then once again I think you know they all enjoyed it it was a uh, British uh, British loss in the morning German win in the afternoon uh, if I recall correctly or it could have been the other way around it certainly went either way uh, and they were both incredibly close games on both sides and there was lots of manoeuvre lots of firing lots of uh, uh, tactical decisions being made and it was really good it went right down to the wire on both sides uh, and you know I don't know how the players enjoyed it uh, they seemed to uh, but I certainly enjoyed watching it and umpiring it for them anyway and that was you know that's one of the great things about this hobby is everybody can have a little bit of a go even as a uh, even as an umpire watching from the side and it was great good fun uh, and yeah, the, the 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 show itself was really really well attended. Um, always really well professionally put on, and you know, Boards and Swords are really it's a really good venue for it. Nice and light and airy, uh, even with you know about fifty odd uh, sweaty middle aged blokes in there, uh, and a couple of women as well. <laughs> but um, there was loads of games. I don't even know how many games there were. I didn't count them, but there was loads and loads and loads uh, and loads of people playing them and having fun, throwing dice around and playing with toy soldiers. What more do you want, really? Um, 600 quid was raised for WizKids, which is a charity that uh, that helps out uh, kids with disabilities uh, with, I think, mostly wheelchairs. Uh, so providing wheelchairs to kids who just basically can't, you know, good ones for them. So really, really good cause. <clears throat> and uh, it, it was uh, there was a huge raffle. I put a couple of items in. I put in uh, Great War by uh, Flames of War and also uh, Battle Group as well, uh, simply because I didn't want either of them clustering up my shelves. Uh, Martin tried to get rid of uh, AJP Taylor's uh, the illustrated First World War onto me, and I was having nothing, of it, none of it, because that book is only worth a being a used as a doorstep. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you're watching, Martin, thanks for trying, but no thanks. And then we ended the evening over a slice of India massive curry warehouse, basically, uh, as we did uh, in the previous years, and it's just a big old. Uh, Indian curry buffet and it was great really nice full of uh, uh, full of uh, full of uh, brown beige food what more could a man want and then I drove home and I was home by before midnight and it was a great night I really enjoyed it really uh, really good day and I'm looking forward to the next crack con I'm thinking of probably bringing along uh, my Battle of Britain stuff for Bag the Hun uh, probably have you know 18 German bombers flying across the table while the the, uh, the 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 Spitfires and the Hurricanes try to cut holes in them as much as possible. <laughs> uh, so that's just something I'm thinking of uh, for future. Well, uh, there's not much more to say really. I think uh, the Stoma Steel Facebook group is nearly on a thousand subscribers. It's only uh, so, uh, so, not subscribers, sorry, join uh, members. Uh, there's, there's about 15 or so to go at this point, so please do join it. I'll put a description in the uh, put a link in the description. And also, if you've made it this far, please do think about subscribing. It costs you nothing. 80% of the people that watch these videos don't subscribe. Uh, you'll really boost my numbers if you do, uh, and I would really, really appreciate it so hit that subscribe button and i will see you in the next storm of steel video